non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Football. Not just Purple Daily, though. Uh Uh-uh. It is comments from YouTube, the Monday edition of a Purple Daily, sponsored by, of course, our great friends from Surly Brewing and also by our friends from TCL TV. Enjoy more with TCL. That means that your favorite sports should be viewed on a TCL TV because if they are, you will find that the picture quality is absolutely fantastic. TCL. All right, Declan Goff, it's up to you to make the magic here. So um, when you are prepared, fire away with questions from YouTube, and we will do our best to answer them. A lot of draft questions, some Judd questions that I'll save at the end like I always do. Yep. Some right. reckless speculation. Okay. And you'll, this will shock you, even some uh, Kirk Cousins fodder here in the uh, comments. A lot of people were tired of, of the Kirk talkers. Yeah. I am the chief uh, CBO, the chief clickbait officer here. Yeah. So... I decide what is clickbaity and what isn't clickbaity at score. Yeah, so it, this every, is true, you do. Every, you know, it always upsets me a little bit. It hurts my ego when people attack the Score North account saying, uh, I can't believe Mackie posted this. Oh, Mackie didn't post this. Yeah, that's true. I posted this. Take your uh, anger right. out on deck. Whatever on happens on at Phil Mackie's account, that, that, that's his bugaboos, and I don't, I don't touch creator. that. Yep. But in terms of the Score North account, anytime you say, I can't believe Mackie approved this, oh, no. Uh he delegates that to me, his that's clickbait true. officer. That's absolutely so, true. I want to make sure that's And long that's has, there. before you got the title even. That's out there. All right. Let's dive in here, Judd. All right. Let's try this one from Zach, because I had a Ventline episode that was on this channel right here that you can watch uh, with a few Vikings fans on Sunday's edition of Ventline from Purple Daily. We talked about some Malik Willis and just general draft needs. Zach says, I keep hearing edge, edge rusher. Listed as an area of need for the Vikings. But as this roster currently stands, do we really... I'm pretty sure we led the entire NFL in sacks for most of last season. What do you guys think? Do we not need an Ed Rusher, and are we over-evaluating the need for an Ed Rusher? Judd, I'm going to put you on the spot with your draft scouting cap here. Do you think the Vikings need an Ed Rusher? I think they need a cornerback more than they need an edge Rusher. Somebody off the, off the right end w- would be nice, but I'm also speaking as if I am positive that Daniil Hunter will be back, and I think he will be, but I'm not absolutely positive. So that is a, I think it's fair to say that that is a to be determined, but I do believe that cornerback Mm -hmm. with what's available is a bigger need immediately than the edge. Yeah. Um, I also think that we need to have a serious discussion too about what the ramifications of the move to a 34, that's right, (laughs) play it, 34 defense is going to do here because... Your front, when you play the 3-4, obviously changes some. Yes, sir. So it's Zach, right? Yes, Zach. Okay. That's so, the one I asked him. Okay, so I understand the question. It makes perfect sense. And I would say that as of right now, if I was to draw up a draft board, I do believe the cornerback spot is a bigger need. But I'm also not going to scoff at getting help at a position that you could always use more help at. But the the 3-4 is definitely going to change some dynamics here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Here's my thought on this. Cornerback is definitely more of a a sense of urgency and need here. I would say uh, on the urgency scale of 1 to 10, which I like to do, you need a cornerback at about an 8 I say I'd say about an eight, and that might be low. You could say you need a nine out of you need you need it's at an urgent level of nine or ten. It's an all out panic corners corners corners. We need a lot more cornerbacks. Sure, but. Mm-hmm. I also believe edge rusher is the most impactful position on the defensive side of the ball. And if you can't stop the pass, and if you're going to have rookie corners and inexperienced corners, and it's just you're going to have to just take your lumps, I'd rather be elite at getting after the quarterback then. Because that you, you can scheme up ways to still get after the quarterback. To Zach's point, they, led, they, they were at the top or near the top of sacks last season in the NFL. So they were stable to f- uh, figure out ways to get after the QB. Um... I will say, too, the need to get an edge rusher would only probably spike if they move on from Daniil Hunter, which I don't think they will. But let's say, Judd, they did move on from Daniil. Yep. Then that probably jumps, right? I mean, that that jumps the shark. Yep. And keep in mind, though, the scheme is going to change. So, like, the scheme is going to be, like, what we grew accustomed to seeing is gone now. So if you're playing a base 3-4, that means the part of the pressure from the edge is going to be from a stand-up linebacker, essentially, mm-hmm. not like a Griffin type of player. So, and and in a 3-4, your three 
your three guys up front can be way more bigger, stout type stuffers. And so like this is all this is all a puzzle <laughs> that's going to look very different than the puzzle that we grew accustomed to seeing in the Zimmer years. So I would just urge that we don't think of this like, okay, edge rusher to replace Griffin, and it's the same thing because that that very well, it's not that he couldn't play, but a guy like that might be a different fit in what the Vikings played than what they're going to play. So we also need to be sort of patient to see what the schematics, there's a football term for you, football. are going to be. Hell, I mean, with with you being in that 34 base defense for the majority of time, and you also need, because I think they're linebackers up there too. Yeah, you find a linebacker, then get out. That's exactly TV, right. right. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like we we need to change our, our what we're accustomed to thinking True. a little bit. But yes, exactly right. Next one here from Jacob and Mark Sell, and they're they're two guys on our YouTube channel here that left this nice comment. And I think Judd would sign up for this in a heartbeat with this piece of uh, reckless speculation. Reckless speculation. Jacob and Mark Sell say, Trey Garrett Bradbury for a late round pick. Okay. What are the odds you think the Vikings would trade Garrett Bradbury? Here's how I think they would trade Garrett Bradbury for that late round pick, Judd. I, I, I'm assuming they're going to give Bradbury every run at possible to be the starting center in 2022. Okay. And I don't see them drafting a center early, but I can see a competition. Yeah. I can see a potential competition and maybe even a, a um a move to guard potentially at right guard. They can maybe move Garrett Bradbury even off the center position to guard. But as training camp winds down and they figure out their offensive line pieces, and if you can figure out someone to give you a 6th or 7th round pick at the end of training camp when you're coming down to the 53, that's when I think you would trade Garrett Bradbury for a late round pick. Well, first of all, I'm not going to, if I'm a team and I get a call from the Vikings, I'm not going to make that trade because if I'm not mistaken, 2023 is going to be the year to pick up his his fifth round option because he, of course, was a first round pick and I ain't paying that. So do I want him for a, a year? My response is no. The second thing with with guard is he's too small. Like, the problem is he's just too small, and, and he's not that good. Um, I want a big guard. I want a guard. <laughs> I don't know if – I. here's the problem. I don't know if playing is best possible that Garrett Bradbury, from a, a perspective of playing – because I think he's a smart guy, so I'm not tr- trying to say he's dumb. But I don't know from a perspective of playing football decks mm-hmm. that he brings enough. I just don't know that there's – for lack of a better terminology, I don't know there's enough game there. Like I watch him play, and it's underwhelming. He gets bullied. So he gets easily. right, right. But I mean, and, and this league now is so built on what? It's built on athletic, like really good inside D linemen who kick people's ass now. Yes, sir. It used to be they were big, but they couldn't really athletically kick your butt. Mm-hmm. And now they do. And you put it perfectly. A guy like Garrett Bradbury gets bullied and pushed back and pushed over. He's like. A, He's like uh, Humpty Dumpty, you know, falls down and then he's screwed. I pers- I th- here's what I think. I think he's just a bust. And that doesn't mean that he can't go to a different team and continue to play. But one, I ain't paying him much. And two, I think as far as what the Vikings thought, they were just dead wrong. It's probably one of Spielman's worst, worst first round, early round picks. Ponder the worst. But Garrett Bradbury... Treadwell, I mean, those guys are all up there as far as just being, I think, extreme disappointments. And I don't know that there's a way to fix Bradbury. I really don't. More, uh, One more draft question here before we get into some reckless speculation on the quarterback. I love this. I jo- love it. Joshua says, I definitely feel Kellen Mond is a better prospect than Malik Willis. Hard to put a price tag hmm. on starting four years in the SEC, especially compared to just two years at lower tier Liberty. Liberty, yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to be to claim to be an expert on either player. Yeah. But I will say this, and I think I've been pretty consistent on the Kellen Mond platform here. So I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> In my opinion, we know nothing about him. Um, he didn't play and he didn't get developed. And there's no question that I think just because of human biases, that gets used against him, right? 
Like, well, he didn't play, he must stink. Or he played those three plays against the Packers, and they they were terrible. And, I mean, it's three plays. The poor guy was thrown in. Um, so I think that there's a bias that Mond is a bust without having any clue. Now, does that mean that he's a better player than Willis is? I don't know, and probably not. But I do believe that at some point in time here, not necessarily like starting, but I think that Kellen Mond, behind the scenes, by people who know what they're watching and probably more importantly care about what they're watching, he needs to get a chance. Mm -hmm. Because like we've all fallen, it feels like, into the, well, that didn't work trap. I'm going to go back to what I continue to say. The entire, for the most part, aside from probably Dersa, Rick Spielman's last draft class, we know nothing about. I'm not passing judgment on anyone who survived who's still there. How do you, like, judge them? Yeah. They didn't get a chance. Right. So, like, I'm not going to say, oh, Kellen Ma, no, bust. Now, I've been told he was not impressive. But I don't know that you see it enough. And I will defend him on this. I think that when you are left to your own devices and not developed, it makes it pretty damn hard to impress people, doesn't it? Yeah. I, when you have all these draft picks that Spielman made in the last two drafts, what it, what is really the issue here? Was it the picks from Spielman, or were they being held hostage by the current coaching staff? We just have to find out. Yeah. Like, I'm willing to give, I, as far as I'm concerned, the draft picks all get now a real opportunity. Yeah, you're zero as PJ Fleck. And some of them might stink. I don't know. But yeah, the Mon thing to me is a little bit too, oh, well, he didn't play, so he must be terrible. He had a coach who wasn't going to play him and clearly didn't. I don't think, in Mike's defense, no pun intended, I don't think Mike knew how to develop him or or cared. Yeah. So we'll find out. All right, some quarterback questions here, some uh, quarterback speculation and thoughts on Kirk Cousins. But Judd, when when, when you hear Kirk Cousins and quarterback speculation, what's what's your go-to beverage? What's, oh. what's the go-to thing you're sipping on when you uh, think about these ideas? Oh, let me see here. That's going to take me a second to think about. I have to ponder, ponder, ponder. Oh, I know. That's right. My friends from Surly Brewing. And when I'm talking quarterbacks, in fact, I got four of these babies in the fridge right now. When I'm talking quarterbacks, I'm talking, uh, to me, the stabilizer of the Surly family. Like, we are talking about the go-to beer because, damn it, it's always there, it's reliable, and it'll get you a first down each and every time. That is, of course, Declan Goff. The Surly Furious, which has long been, long been, the longtime Hall of Fame quarterback of the Surly Brewing Empire, Furious, if you haven't tried it, you got to. And once you do, show us your cans. Show us your taps. At Jay Zulgad. J-Z-U-L-G-A-D on Twitter. And I will respond because, damn it, if I am loyal to one thing, Mm -hmm. it is Surly Brewing and especially the Furious. I cracked open a couple Furiouses at home uh, on Saturday evening before, did you? Hit, before hitting the dinner scene. I had a nice little dinner, and I before didn't know I left, you were, uh, I, uh, I did not know that. No, I like yeah, I like good Surly Furious. Okay, yeah, no, I, I I love. Here's the thing. I know you this, like this might the shock you. I love alcohol. I love beer. I love seltzers. I love oh tequila, sure, but I, I didn't whiskies. know that 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 was a a oh, yeah. potential Declan go yeah. to it. I times. will say, uh, good for you. And I love op- cracking that can and pouring it into a nice little glass. Oh, there, it's so good. So it's elite. It's elite. Uh, David, thanks, PJ Fleck. David says, you guys are dancing around the obvious. You guys. Kirk Cousins is the bridge quarterback. The other bridge quarterbacks out there, I simply like better than Kirk. We are a center away from having an offense that many QBs out there would thrive in. The fact that we can wrangle a draft pick or two from any any other team is just icing on the cake, and trading Kirk is a no-brainer. It is... He's kind of saying two things here. I think we agree with that last part. Yep, we do agree with this last part. But he's also saying his main point is Kirk Cousins is the bridge quarterback, the bridge quarterback okay. to maybe the next generation of Vikings football. I'd like to explain this now because um, th- this is not the first person to say this. And I think what we're dealing with here, Declan Goff, now is semantics. Mm. So let me explain just quickly my thought process here. Because I see what he is saying, and I totally get that. I don't think... I don't think of a bridge quarterback as being a cap hit of $45 million, okay? So I get the point. It might be entirely right. But from a semantic standpoint, I see a bridge guy as being a cap hit $20 million or something. 
So all I'm saying is I don't think you can call a guy who eats up that much of your cap personally a bridge guy, but I it just comes down to your definition, and that's my personal one. So for the most part, what David said is exactly right. Mm -hmm. Like I totally get that, gotcha. and I don't disagree. And the last part of your statement I totally agree with. I just don't believe that you can call a guy who's going to eat as much of your cap space up as Kirk potentially is in 2022, a bridge guy. That's the only difference between us. I see what he's, what he's trying to say is Kirk Cousins is the bridge to the next yeah, and era he'll of be gone. Football, Yeah, which is which fair. Which is technically accurate, but yeah. I know what he means. Matt right. says Gardner Minshew is the answer. He's younger. He's cheaper. This yeah. guy's the bridge quarterback, That'd be a bridge right? quarterback. More mobile, more confident than Kirk. That's has true, shown actually. flashes of big potential and isn't going to take a first-round pick to acquire the cap. Isn't that big of a problem? We all know what needs to be done, and it's time to move on from Kirk. Yeah. He's not a team player, that being Kirk Cousins. Uh, Gardner Minshew, that's that's your that's bridge, the bridge quarterback. Cor that's exactly, but I mean, that's my definition. So, like, if you say, no, Judd, that, that's not mine, and I think Kirk can be called the bridge, you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. We just, I think of a guy who makes less and gets you across across the bridge to your new quarterback. Uh, with Kirk, to me, he is, Kirk would, so let's see, what would I call Kirk personally? And I'm not going to use a bad word here, so don't be concerned. Um, I would call Kirk, I guess in my definition, the incumbent. Like he's the incumbent. Yeah, I don't think of the president who doesn't win the election for a second term to be the bridge president. That makes sense? Yes, it does. Like, it's totally just grasping at wording at this point in time. Next comment here uh, from Mark, who says, in response to our Kirk Cousins of the Miami Dolphins conversation you and I had on the Saturday edition of Purple Daily. Yeah. He says Kirk might, Kirk, oh my God, I just did it. Kirk might actually sign an extension there, Miami, because there's no income tax for that greedy SOB. Oh, Mark's word, not mine. Mark. Mark's words, Mark's Mark. words, not mine. Mark's Whoa, words. Oh, Mark. Reckless speculation. Let me say something to Mark right now. That's an awesome point. <laughs> Tampa, Miami, Houston, Dallas, correct? Yeah. Las Vegas, no state. Income tax. Do you know if Dare if 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 Carr breaks the bank, do you realize that he will break the bank and pay no state income taxes? Think about how much. Like he'll get that money. Yes, sir. Yeah, he'll that's... get that money. In, in fact, the reason why a ton of uh, pro athletes live specifically in Vegas, Florida, and Texas because of that. Because if you establish, in fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I might be speaking out of school here, but I don't think I am. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that the I believe Joe Maurer's primary residence at one point was Fort Myers. Because mm -hmm. then you don't got to pay those nasty state income taxes at least year round. All right, a couple more here. Steve says. We lead, we led, excuse me, almost every game this year, and a lot by double digits. How, how was it Kirk's fault that we lost 90% of those games? You're idiots. What quarterback scores every time they have the ball? Do people actually watch the games, or do they just talk? What do you respond to Steve there that say, uh, number one, we're idiots, which I actually, we're not going to uh, fight you too much I have there. no problem with that. Um, but how was it Kirk's fault that we lost 90% of those games? Go back and watch the Cleveland, Cleveland game, home game. Go back and watch it. Story of Kirk Cousins. Story of Kirk Cousins right there. Your defense played pretty well. You scored early, and then you didn't score again. Go back and watch the Detroit game. Here, you won it. Kirk won it for you. You should have won by three touchdowns. Detroit sucks. Justin Jefferson had a huge first half. Here's the thing people don't get, and I keep saying this and tweeting it. Three heads on the monster. Months ago, I wanted all three gone. So far, two of my wishes have, have been granted. Got to get rid of the third head, though, before the monster has been slayed. Mm. The Zim head, slayed. Spielman head, slayed. Kirk's next. <gasps> He's holding that sword, right? Kirk's next. Yeah, 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 Kirk's yeah. next. This <laughs> is, the problem is it didn't work. The problem is I don't need, look, I'm all for moving on from lots of pe people on this team. 
It's a new era. Embrace the new era. Like what, what are you holding on to here? Some hope from 2018. And by the way, for all of you and our listeners and, and viewers are very smart. So I'm probably not talking specifically to them, but, for all of you Kirk fans or mild Kirk fans, I've been incredibly consistent in saying I want everybody gone. Yes. I wanted the head coach gone. He's gone. GM gone. He's gone. I want the quarterback gone. He should be gone. Don't stop now. And a lot of people were like, oh, Mike was great. Mike was great. Mike's been fired. I hate Mike. Okay. So look, that's fine. I understand that you now think that Mike was the problem and he was part of the problem. Kirk is part of the problem too. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about. A couple more Judd comments here to wrap up our comments edition from YouTube. Good. Purple Jerome says, does Judd have any friends? He comes off as smug and arrogant instead of intelligent. That's interesting because that used to be directed at Phil. Yeah. Like I, I don't feel like I don't get a lot of, and I do get hate, but I don't get a lot of smug and arrogant. Mm-hmm. As far as friends go, I've got a few yeah, here a and couple. there, but not a lot. No, Judd doesn't have a lot of friends, and that's by choice. And I want it small. Yes. I want my I want my club small. Yep. Um, smug and arrogant. Arrogant, maybe. I don't think I'm that smug. I would say, I guess Phil, if... Phil can be smug. I feel like I'm not really very smug. I would say you're maybe more smug than you are arrogant if I had to rank the two. Which one are you more likely to be than the other? Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call you as... I wouldn't call you arrogant. But I would say you could maybe come off as some smug. I guess. I, I guess. Now, I wouldn't I wouldn't classify you as the either either of these two things. I was going to say... I can see one. I can't... I'm, I'm not yeah, both. I don't, I don't think you're I both just, either. But I mean, friends-wise, yeah. I don't have a lot that, of friends. That, that, I, I'm true. not going to lie about that. And Brandon says... I'm comfortable. I would drive up to Minnesota from my home in Cincinnati, Ohio, just to have a Surly Furious with Judd. Baby, if you ever wondered. Just, you can't come into his house. Wondered whatever became of me. No, but I will meet but you at the bar. But he will meet you at Surly. But I will meet you at Surly Brewing yes. at the Brew Hall Sunday. Yeah. You know what? Sunday morning for the delicious brunch there. Mm-hmm. We'll bond with some Furiouses yeah. in those nice Surly glasses. I ran and, into uh, a couple. Yeah. You know, Dex, like, yeah. like you got all of the specialty taps, too. Yeah. I ran into a couple listeners on, on the town on Saturday night that were big fans of Score North. Yeah, I saw that. That's yeah. awesome. Big fans of Score North. They loved you. They liked me. They shockingly liked me. Co-host Declan Goff. Co-host Declan Goff. Oh, we didn't think that was you. I said, well, who are you? Because I didn't know who you were talking. You know, I, Sounds I, like a Judd thing. Oh, who are you? Who are you? Who? That was my Sid Harvey. Who? Hey, I gotta talk to you. Let me uh, tell you something. Yeah, but they had a couple couple listeners from Score North. That's always appreciate you guys coming up and they clearly did not us. think that Declan Goff was smug or arrogant. Smug or no, no, no. I don't come off as smug. Only the true people that know me would maybe maybe a couple more beers in, I can become a little smug and a little arrogant. But but that's a difference. So I am the CBO. Of well, anyway, Vikings Twitter. Oh, you so. most definitely are. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just taking it. Day by day, I'm not in yet, but that's okay. I'm comfortable with that. Judd will do what's best for Judd. I got to do what's best for me. Yep. I got to do what's best for me and Dawn and Stella. It's a family. Stella's driving a hard bargain right now. Mm. Her dog food is not cheap. Yeah. Oof. That's all I got. All right. Well, hey, that's our comments edition from YouTube. Right, Hit bye. the subscribe button right here on this YouTube channel for Daily Minnesota Vikings Entertainment. We're on Apple, Spotify, Score North app. Appreciate you guys. We'll be back tomorrow.